Hello 3D printing friends, today on the BB3D channel we'll get a look at the Elegoo Neptune 3. Stick around and we'll get into it right after this. I'm Brian and you are watching BB3D. This episode of the BB3D channel is brought to you in part by these awesome channel members. Becoming a member is a great way to support the channel and has a few perks besides just getting your name and lights here. Click the join button to find out more. Hi, welcome back. Hey, if you're new here and you're wanting to learn about 3D printing, 3D modeling, and other 3D printing related stuff, start now by subscribing and clicking the bell so you don't miss anything. Okay, so today we're going to take a look at Elegoo's Neptune 3. Big thanks to Elegoo for sending this over. Hey, by the way, I want to point out that this video has chapters, so you can jump around or skip over parts if you want. I mean, I get that people don't necessarily want to watch the assembly process, for example, so if that's you, I got you covered. Now, there's a lot to talk about, so let us get right into it. At first glance, you might think that the Neptune 3 is yet another ho-hum, bed-slinging Ender 3 clone. And in some ways you'd be right, but in other ways you'd be wrong, and in fact, probably pleasantly surprised. Following the basic Ender 3 Pro formula, it's a Cartesian style printer made from V-slot aluminum extrusions with a power supply mounted vertically behind the right side of the Z-axis, a single Z-axis stepper motor and lead screw, a Bowden drive extrusion system, and a control screen on the right front corner of the printer. But the Ender 3 Pro is $236, while the Neptune 3 is just $209.99. Now let's just call this price what it is, it's 210 bucks. And what do you get for your 210 bucks? Well, quite a lot it turns out. You get an actually pretty nice FDM 3D printer. And if you're new to 3D printer terminology, FDM means fused deposition modeling, and in this case it means the printer melts plastic filament to print models. It's got a filament runout sensor so it can let you know when you need to run out and get more. No, I'm not tired of making that dad joke yet. This filament sensor is different though. It can also detect clogs because it monitors whether the filament is actually moving through it. It's even got some really nice guide rollers on the input side. And the printer has a power loss recovery feature. Plus, it's got a handle to make it easier to pick up and move around. It's also got belt tensioners on the X and Y axes, a 360 watt power supply, and a 32 bit mainboard with silent stepper motor drivers. It has a 4.3 inch touchscreen that connects to the printer with a curly cord, so you can actually take the screen off the printer to control it and then snap it back on. The Neptune 3 has a build volume of 220 millimeters on the x-axis, 220 millimeters on the y-axis, and 280 millimeters on the z-axis. That's, that's actually pretty tall for a bed this size. Oh, speaking of the bed, this bed uses hard mounting points to secure it. No springs or adjustment knobs here, thanks to the Neptune 3's automatic mesh bed leveling feature. There are 11 screws going through the bed, through some metal spacers, hi Ivan, and down into the Y carriage. Then on top of that, there's a strong magnetic sheet, and on top of that, there's a spring steel sheet with a textured PEI print surface on it. I'm starting to see a lot of new printers coming with magnets and spring steel sheets and textured PEI, and I am not going to complain about that at all. It makes it so easy to get prints off the bed. Plus, I love the texture it leaves on the part of the model that was on the bed. The bed, by the way, has a maximum temperature of 100 degrees Celsius. As I mentioned, the Neptune 3 uses a Bowden drive system with this dual drive gear extruder that grabs filament and pushes it down a Teflon tube to the nozzle. Like pretty much all FDM 3D printers these days, this one takes 1.75 millimeter filament and has a 0.4 millimeter nozzle. The printer can heat the nozzle to a maximum of 260 degrees Celsius. Now I confirmed with Elegoo that this is using a PTFE lined hot end, which means the Teflon tube goes all the way down through the hot parts and right up to the nozzle. So the highest temperature at which I would be comfortable printing is about 235 or 240 degrees Celsius. Anything hotter than that, and the PTFE can deform, which will make clogging more likely. Plus, at temperatures of around 250 degrees, PTFE tubing can release gases that are not the best thing for you to breathe. 
The tool head has two parts cooling fans on it, one on either side, to provide better cooling for your printed models. And the cooling fan for the heatsink in there is thermally controlled, only running when the nozzle's temperature is over 50 degrees Celsius, so the printer is quieter when it's on but not in use. A lot of printers just leave that fan on full time. One other thing to mention about the tool head. Elegoo is using a strain gauge in here, so the Neptune 3 actually uses its nozzle as a bed probe. This is a really cool feature. It probes 16 points and a 4x4 grid on the bed to generate a mesh of the bed's surface. That way it can tell if the bed is high or low in certain spots and compensate for that. All in all, that is a lot of 3D printer for 210 bucks. Okay, so I think that's it for the about this printer portion of the video. Now, this is a sum assembly required printer, but putting it together isn't hard. The printer was really well packed with plenty of foam padding. Here's all the stuff that was in the box. There's the printer base, the gantry, the screen, the power supply, and the power cord. And the accessory and tool bag contained all the parts and tools needed to assemble the printer, along with a USB card reader and an 8GB microSD card. The uselessly small amount of filament is meh, but the flush cutters make me happy, and Elegoo even included a USB cable. So I said it was easy to put together, and here's the whole process. The first step is bolting the gantry to the base. For this, you need the base, the gantry, the four M5 by 45 screws, and the four millimeter Allen wrench. With the printer on its side, secure the gantry to the base. The M4 by 45 screws go up through the bottom of the base and into the gantry. It can be a little bit of a balancing act to get this part done, so take your time. Put the screws in finger tight first, then go back and tighten them down with the Allen wrench. When you're done, return the printer to its full upright and locked position. Next, secure the power supply to the back of the gantry. For this, you'll need the printer, the power supply, the two M4 by 18 screws, and the three millimeter Allen wrench. Insert the M4 by 18 screws into the pre-drilled holes on the gantry, and then into the power supply. Next, attach the screen to the printer. Although this should go without saying, you'll need the printer, the screen, and the curly cord. Plug the curly cord into the printer, and then snap the screen onto the bracket on the right front corner of the printer. And then the most satisfying part, slowly remove the plastic film from the screen. This part is definitely appealing. Okay, we're about halfway to being done. Let's attach the handle to the top of the gantry. For this step, you'll need the printer, the handle, the two M4 by 10 screws, and the three millimeter Allen wrench. There are captive nuts in the top of the gantry, so slide those into position to align with the screw holes in the handle. Insert the screws into the handle and then into those nuts and with the handle centered on the top of the gantry, tighten them down. With that done, let's attach the spool holder to the gantry. For this, you'll need all the stuff from the spool holder bag, that is, the two parts of the spool holder, and the screws and T-nuts. You'll also need the three millimeter Allen wrench. Screw the axle part of the spool holder onto the arm. The screws and T-nuts should be inserted into the arm as shown here. Then put the spool holder on the gantry and tighten the screws. As you tighten them, the T-nuts will rotate 90 degrees to grab onto the extrusion. Next, it's time to plug things in. For this step, you need the printer. <laughs> Connect the power supply to the rest of the printer by plugging the two XT60 connectors together. At this point, it would be a good idea to set the input voltage switch on the power supply to match your main supply voltage. The power supply ships with a switch set for 230 volts, but here in the US, the right setting is 115 volts. Then plug in the Z-axis stepper motor using the four-wire cable marked Z. And Plug in the Z-axis optical end stop switch with the last cable, the three-wire cable marked Z. Now the printer is assembled. A good thing to do after building any printer is to make sure the wheels that ride in the V-slots are adjusted so there's no wobble. And on the bed, we've got a little bit of wobble, so let's get that adjusted out. With the printer on its side, you can see that the wheels can spin a bit too easily. That means they aren't tight enough against the aluminum extrusion. This nut you see here is an eccentric nut, and the hole through the center of it is deliberately off-center. 
So as it turns, the wheel will move closer to or further away from the extrusion. Turning it right or left doesn't necessarily tighten or loosen it. If you turn it one direction and the wheel gets closer to the extrusion, great. If the wheel gets looser, well, you can either turn it the other way or keep going and it'll eventually come around to tightening again. One thing though, you don't want these overly tight because that can cause problems too. Tighten them just enough to remove the wobble and call it good. If this seems a little unclear, I do have a whole video devoted to the subject and you can check that out if you need to. So here I've got things adjusted so the bed no longer wobbles. It's also a good idea to check the wheels on the X carriage and the wheels on the X axis that ride along the Z axis and adjust them as needed. Okay, so with the printer assembled and the wheels adjusted and the wobbles gone, it's time to turn the printer on and probe the bed so the printer knows where it's high or low and can automatically compensate for that. This process heats the nozzle and the bed and that can take it about three minutes. Once the nozzle and the bed are at temperature, it performs the bed probing. The actual bed probing takes about two minutes to get all 16 points. Once it's got those points probed, it moves the nozzle to the center of the bed. From there, you set the Z offset by using a piece of paper as a feeler between the nozzle and the bed while adjusting the nozzle up or down from the screen. Software-wise, the Neptune 3 comes with an Elegoo branded version of Ultimaker's Cura slicer software, which contains all the Ultimaker printers and a couple of Elegoo printers. Now there's this whole thing with the open source license under which Ultimaker released Cura. If someone downloads the freely available source code, makes changes to it, compiles it, and releases that changed version, that someone also needs to make that source code available. That's how this particular license works. Now, I'm not going to go on a rant about it here, but I can't find anywhere that Elegoo has released the source code to their version of Cura. And a huge reason to stick with Ultimaker Cura is that unlike the rebranded versions, it gets regular updates and bug fixes. Now, from the slicer's point of view, this printer is pretty much an Ender 3 with a taller build volume. So I used the standard vanilla Ultimaker Cura version 5.1, added an Ender 3, and named it Neptune 3. And then I changed its build height to 280 millimeters, and that's it. All the models I sliced, I used Cura 5.1 instead of the Elegoo version. Okay, so once the bed probing was complete, I loaded some filament and printed the one test print on the included micro SD card, which was this cute little Buddha. This was printed in Polymaker's Polyterra PLA in the fossil gray color. It turned out really well, and I don't see any issues with it. Then I sliced a chip cube. I printed this with some orange PLA from Bamboo Lab. This took about 30 minutes to print, and it turned out great. I also printed a 3D Benchy in that orange PLA. This was a little over an hour and a half, but it doesn't have any major flaws. Since the bow doesn't look wrinkly, I can tell that the parts cooling fans are doing a good job. About the only thing I see here is a couple of little blobs, but I think those may be Z-seam artifacts where the slicer chose that particular spot as the start of a new layer. Other than that, it's a nice benchy. Then I printed MacGyver's Caladragon, which took almost an hour. No flaws, little tiny bit of wispy stringing between the antler things, and overall, a great little print. Switching filament again, I printed Luby's Aria the Dragon in some 3D Solutech see-through blue PLA that I've had for probably three years now. There were a few strings between the wings, but nothing major and nothing you can't just pull off. Overall, very nice. Continuing the unintentional dragon theme, I printed MacGyver's Articulated Dragon again in the see-through blue PLA. This was almost 11 hours of printing time. Again, a little bit of stringing, but a heat gun would take care of the little wisps on the dragon, and putting the filament in a dryer overnight would probably reduce the stringing on future prints. All of the articulating pieces moved just fine, and I think it turned out pretty great. Finally, I printed the inversion vase from Clockspring 3D. This is a beautiful spiral vase mode print printed in some rainbow silk PLA. This is really pretty, and I like the color transition. I scaled this up to the full 280 millimeter build height so you could see just how tall of a thing the Neptune 3 can print. At this size, it was about a seven hour print, but I think it came out really good, and I'm happy with the quality. 
Okay, so now that I've run some filament through the printer, I've gotten a pretty good feel for it. So let me share with you the things I like and the things I don't like about the Neptune 3, starting with the things I don't like. The screen's curly cord seems poorly put together, at least on the printer I received. Occasionally, I ran into issues where moving the cable even just a little bit would cause the screen to disconnect, and then I'd have to turn the printer off and on again to get the screen back. Elegoo had me do some troubleshooting, but the things they had me try didn't fix the problem. Eventually, I tracked it down to the RJ9 connectors on the ends of the cable. They weren't crimped all the way down, so they weren't making good contact with the wires. I also noticed that the cable jacket wasn't crimped inside the connector, so there wasn't any strain relief on the cable either. Now, I get it. Sometimes a bad cable slips by in testing, and to Elegoo's credit, they're sending me a new one. The last time I checked, it was somewhere between California and New Jersey. But I wanted to fix it now, so I dug out my old 1990s era phone cable crimping tool and bought a pack of RJ9 connectors from Amazon. And I fixed it myself. Totally not hard to do, and I was surprised to learn that while this is a vintage piece of telecom paraphernalia purchased from a Radio Shack a long time ago, although not in a galaxy far, far away, they're still being made. But honestly, that's about the only complaint I have about the Neptune 3. So now, here's what I like. Assembly was easy, consisting of bolting on the X and Z gantry, then bolting on the power supply, handle, and spool holder, and plugging in a couple of connectors. The manual covered this well, and reminds you more than once to check and adjust the eccentric nuts on the wheels and tighten them if necessary. I'm getting really good prints from this machine, too. The hot end fan is under firmware control, so it's only running when the hot end is above 50 degrees Celsius, and while the power supply fan runs full time, it isn't terribly loud. The Neptune 3 seems like a heck of a value. Keeping in mind this printer is just a smidgen over $200 US, and it has a touchscreen interface, a magnetic spring steel sheet with a textured PEI print surface, a dual drive gear extruder, dual parts cooling fans, automatic bed probing with no manual bed adjustment necessary. These are the kinds of features you tend to find on more expensive printers, so it's nice to see them on a printer this affordable and this reasonably well implemented. From what I can see, the Elegoo Neptune 3 is an incredible bargain for the price. I've got a link to it in the description if you're interested in getting one. Well, 3D printing friends, that's about all the time we have for this episode. And now that we're at the end, let's go print something cool. Hey, real quick before you go, I wanted to say thanks for being one of the super awesome people who sticks around all the way to the end, and thanks for all the likes, comments, and shares. And an especially big thanks to those who directly support what I do. You're all wonderful for doing that, and I really appreciate it. If you liked this episode, a thumbs up would be great. And if you'd like to help support the channel, check the description for ways you can do exactly that. And hey, if you haven't already subscribed, please do. It's absolutely free, and it's an excellent way to help keep me making these videos for you. Well, that's it for this one. Thanks again, and I'll see you next time here on the BV3D channel.